here via tele um, teleconferencing here on Facebook with Pastor James, our senior pastor of Keep Your Real Worldwide Ministries. We're located here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And when all of this COVID-19 uh, quarantine is over, you all are welcome to join us for service uh, in our status. Um, we are expecting Pastor James to join us soon. Uh, while we are live streaming this morning on Facebook, we also are trying to connect via teleconference um, with everyone. We're having some technical difficulties with the teleconferencing, unfortunately. But um, if you <clears throat> excuse me, know anyone that does not have Facebook um, but would like to join us, um, you can also check out the video on YouTube. It will be posted on YouTube uh, later this afternoon. And um, our teleconferencing phone number, dial-in number, if someone doesn't have Facebook, is 515-606-5430. I'm sure it's probably overloaded uh, with everyone trying to tap in and uh, join their church service this morning. Amen. So we praise God this morning for you all joining us. We are so glad you're here. We're so glad to be here. Hallelujah. Back into the house of prayer with the Lord, just worshiping him, praising him for he is awesome. He is magnificent. He is glorious. He is tremendous. He is just so wonderful. Hallelujah. I just praise the Lord um, for everything that he does. And, and he just speaks to our spirit. He speaks to our situation. Amen. Whatever you're dealing with, um, the Lord, he will come to you where you are. Hallelujah. Pastor James and I have always believed that it doesn't matter where you are in life, um, what situation you're facing. Even if you know you know, you need a heart change or there's something in your life you know is not um, godly or it's it's not um, in line with the word of God. If you just let the Lord know, you know there's something you've got to do to prepare yourself and, and change. If you let the Lord know where you are, he already knows where you are, but if you let him know that, you know, you desire to be closer to him. You desire to have a better relationship with him. He will meet you right where you are. Hallelujah. He will meet you right where you are and he can help you. A lot of people help you get to the place you need to be in him. Amen. These are people calling because they're having some difficulty getting on the line. So please be patient with us as we are um, working uh, some technical difficulties out. But we are planning to have some testimonies today, amen, and um, people join us. Pastor James just walked in, and um, he will be joining us shortly as we are preparing for service. So, as I said, God is good, and he will work things out for you. He will meet you right where you are, amen. He is tremendous, and he is glorious. I want to read a scripture to you. Um, as we're getting started, the scripture says, this is from Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, starting with the 10th verse. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles. This is in the Good Old morning. Testament. The Old Testament is in the front of the Bible. We are uh, not a traditional church. We're not church as usual. So we will stop service to make sure everybody is on one accord with each other and that everybody has the scripture and they know where it is we are a teaching ministry and an equipping ministry amen so it 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 it, it is nothing for us to stop in the middle of service and to reteach something or re-emphasize something amen all right so if you have it please join me in reading nehemiah the eighth chapter starting with the tenth verse nehemiah is after the book of Ezra and it is before the book of Job okay or excuse me before the book of Esther so between Ezra and Esther amen 
So Nehemiah, the 8th chapter and 10th verse says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. I want you to emphasize on for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. We are um, in a new day. And the word of God says that um, each day the Lord's mercy is renewed unto us. Hallelujah. He is ever merciful to us. And we are so gracious. He is such a forgiving God. Amen. And we just want to focus on the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when we come into a new day, hallelujah, that is a new joy, a new joy. And his joy brings us strength. It brings us encouragement. It, it boosts us. It, it lifts us up. Hallelujah. So I just want you to say to the top of your lungs, hallelujah. But we glorify you, Lord God. We thank you for your joy this day. Hallelujah. Can I get everybody to say hallelujah with me? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. It is my strength. Hallelujah. I am so encouraged this morning because there are some things that were on my heart past day and a half or so. And when I awoke this morning, the Lord put a song in my heart that says that he is everything to me hallelujah it doesn't matter what um others have been it doesn't matter the position they are in my life god is everything he has been everything he has been my uh, although i have family members and i have some friends and acquaintances and i've got church family but god has been everything to me hallelujah Everything that I have ever needed, he has been that and then some for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So with that, I'm going to turn the service over to Pastor James. And again, welcome to Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries today. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I am elated, uh, absolutely excited to uh, be with you on this day uh, as we look to the hills from which coming our help. The Bible tells us that our help cometh from the Lord. So I am encouraged this morning, uh, even in spite of such technical difficulties uh, and delays, we are so excited that um, people of faith, uh, of great faith, uh, are encouraged to join us either by YouTube or Facebook or even we have a number of individuals that are not um, technically sound or they don't have the capabilities of going on social media. So we are so proud to actually have them via telephone uh, live with us now. Amen. So I am so excited. You know, we are in times right now that have lots of uncertainties. But as I tell people all the time, I want to encourage the listeners right now. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. Amen. What really matters is that we are set apart for such a time as this to be the vessels that God can use and a beacon of light unto dark places and in dark places and dark times in the lives of people that God should expose us to. So I want to encourage you today to stop necessarily just telling God about all your problems. He knows what your problems are. He knows what your uh, lack is. He knows where you lack. He knows 
everything there is to know about you. He knows your journey. He knows the ups. He knows the downs. He knows you're in and you're out. You're coming and you're going. But I want to encourage you today that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So we can joyfully serve the most high king of kings, Lord of lords. And despite whatever your journey has included, God has a plan for you. So I want you today to sit back, buckle up and relax. And I want you to understand that no matter what your life has been like, no matter what your journey or your path has included, you are the absolute best that God has to offer. And I want to encourage you in his word today. I want to I want you to be lifted up and edified and stronger and better than what you've ever felt you were before. Amen. So as we set today, uh, today's journey in its course, I want us to be encouraged to the point where we stop telling God about all our problems and we start telling our problems about our God. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, we come before you right now just thanking you, O oh God, for who you are in our lives. And we acknowledge you in all ways and we thank you right now for directing our path. Now, Father God, as we come to fellowship one to another, open up the windows of heaven and to begin to pour out blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings more than what we'll be able to withstand. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this day. We're so grateful. We ask that you move me out of the way, move everyone participating out of the way, oh God, that you might have your way and take your word this morning and plant your word so far in the pit of our souls that, oh God, that word began to take root and eventually began to permeate itself and move in and out about us, O oh God, that you get the glory, that you get the honor, and that your people that are called according to your name, according to your purpose, they shall be set free. Launch your people today, O oh God, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth, and you shall be glorified. It is in Jesus' name that we give thanks and pray this morning. Amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. I want to start off by um, just singing a, a, a hymnal, a few courses of it, and you can, wherever you are. Now, I am going to ask those that are on the telephone with us to, if they would, uh, until I ask that we unmute the phones, I am going to ask that you mute your lines so that um, we don't get a lot of background feed or echoing or uh, voices just running on top of each other this morning. Amen. So I am Pastor Sonny James, and I am so pleased to announce um, that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And as we start off together, again, those that have the phone lines going so that it doesn't muffle, I'm just going to ask that you sing in your spirit or mute your phone that it does not cause any echoing. But let us come on one accord in our praise and worship this morning by simply just saying, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now say it again, be glad in it. Now I want you to just start all over again. See, sometimes we've got to give God the room in our life to slow our minds down and slow our hearts down, that he can really minister to us in a most effective way. And so with that, I just want you to just take a moment and slow down because wherever you sit, wherever you lie right now, I want you to know that God can meet you right where he's at, where you are right now. And so I want you to just worship to him and just tell him, say, 
This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And make it personal. Make it personal. In spite of your journey, in spite of everything going on around you, in spite of your finances, in spite of your relationships, in spite of all the legal battles that face you, in spite of all the yard work that lays ahead of you, in spite of all your family and friends probably not being as close to you as you would desire them to be, in spite of you feeling sometimes abandoned and all alone, in spite of you struggling with an addiction, in spite of you struggling with your flesh, in spite in spite of whatever faces you today, I want you to just prepare your hearts by just singing a few courses, by just singing, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, I will rejoice I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. That's it. Now, let's do it together. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Well, um, I'm excited this morning because I believe that we're going to be encouraged in many different ways. I've asked an individual to come and to share uh, just a brief part of his testimony with us this morning, because I think it's important, people of faith, that we understand that whatever we're thinking, it doesn't actually mean that's what God is thinking or that's what God is doing. I believe God is doing a new thing. I believe God is calling people right out of the mucky muck that they might be in. I believe God is calling on people that desire to be a part of that new remnant. And so I want to open the door up for a few testimonies this morning. And I'm going to start off with a gentleman that, well, on the surface, you know, hey, I could talk about this, brother. I can say whatever I want to. But one thing I cannot say is that he does not desire more of what God has for him. He's a, a wonderful individual, but he has a true and real story about his journey. And so uh, with this ministry, um, we want to make sure that the people of faith are heard. We want to open up a door of opportunity that people can tell their stories that the lost might be compelled to come into the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom that God has predestined for them. So with no further ado, he won't be long before you, but um, he's also possibly going to help me with some technical stuff because I'm not the most tech savvy individual as well. In fact, on my screen, something just popped up. And I'm so tetrified to try to touch it that I don't want to erase it. Uh, so I'm going to wait until Chris comes. And if if he's bold enough to touch something without messing up our screen, then uh, he can do so. So we're going to open the, the airways here just for a brief, a few seconds here that... Uh, Christopher Taylor might come and just share his heart in a real practical, genuine, genuine way. So let's receive him by saying, Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we value. And we value. What God has put on your heart. What God has put on your heart. Help prepare us. Help prepare us. To be more humble. To be more humble. And to be who God is calling us to be. To, and to be who God is calling us to be. And God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother. Here's Christopher Taylor. Hello and good morning. 
Uh, so I'm going to be sharing my story today. Um, so we were in a car the other day, just me, pastor, his wife, his daughter, and my brother. And he asked me, what did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> your process and your, what, what, why is faith so important to you? Because it's my everything. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, because it's my everything. And then I, I went on to say, well, yes. uh, it's been kind of rocky. I haven't always, you know, put faith first. And during that time, nothing worked at all. Nothing was working. And so I decided to turn back to him. And that was because of something that my dad was doing. He, he turned back to the old ways. So he was doing the Sabbaths and, you know, breaking bread and all that good stuff. And, I mean, he wasn't perfect. He cussed and did everything. And, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, not going there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so... Uh, he started doing it, and when he passed, I was looked lost and didn't know where to go. So then I found Pastor James, and I'm happy that I did because it, you know, I was conflicted for a while there after Dad passed, and uh, yeah, so I'm just. Amen. I'm I'm happy. <laughs> Amen. Everything is better. Everything works now. I Amen. pray and yeah, all that good stuff too. Well, bless the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let's let's give God a hand praise. Amen. Let's let's give God a hand praise and and actually Nick has so much more uh, to share. But you know, your first time out the gate, oh, nerves yeah. are flowing and <laughs> uh, but what what an awesome awesome testimony and you know many of you listening right now many of you watching right now some of you know somebody who might be just like Chris and oh wait until you meet his twin Nick what a beautiful beautiful set of brothers who truly set out every day to be a blessing unto somebody else but can honestly say the journey to get here has not been an easy one may not have been fun at all and as you heard with Christopher Taylor sometimes we even experience tragedy in the midst of our growth development and our search I want to encourage somebody today. I don't care if you're sitting in a prison cell. I don't care if you're sitting in the hospital and the doctors are telling you that things aren't looking so good. I want to tell you right now that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And whatever God has predestined for you, it's going to be for you. Amen. So I'm so encouraged. I want to open up the phone lines here, if I may, for just a, a, a few seconds. Uh, there might be someone listening by way of phone. And uh, Sister Kirsten, uh, my wife, had said to you in the beginning that this is not church as usual. And so one of the things that I love uh, doing is allowing the people of faith to just share their heart and to just share their testimony and the journey that's gotten them to be able to wake up in the morning and lift up their head and say, okay, I'm going at it again. Amen. So I want to open the airways just for a moment. If there would be one, uh, there is an individual that I recently came in contact with. And um, what a story, you know, God really spared her life. And, uh, I really wish she was able to make it on the line this morning. Uh, I never know anyone's schedule, but if she is on the line this morning, I certainly want to open the airways and give her an opportunity. If not, I want to uh, give another good brother an opportunity. He shared a wonderful family testimony with me 
on recently. And if Brother David Hinton is on the line with us, I would love to open the airways and give him an opportunity to just briefly in a few seconds share what God has done for him and his family here of recent. Brother David Hinton, are you with us uh, on the phone line, sir? Uh, yes, sir. This is the evangelist, David Hinton. Amen. Amen. Would you uh, okay. care to share with the people of faith your testimony um, that you shared well, with me recently, sir? And then we'll get well, the service started. Well, I'll tell you... Uh, the, uh, it's a verse of, I believe it's First uh, uh, Corinthians 9, uh, 27. Uh, uh, well, not First Corinthians 9, 29, 24 through 27 talks about a race. And uh, I just want to just stop and be honest. Uh, 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 well, I say once I start running the race right, in the right way, so then I will speak after that. Uh, that is my. That is what I, I desire to do: to run the race right and run for a, a incorruptible crown. But uh, Amen. And then I'll give that crown to Jesus, and so that's it. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, bless the Lord this morning, and um, it's awesome when we can include the entire kingdom. You know, we're in a new ministry launch here. Uh, Kingdom Builder Ministries, you know, we, we've we always operated under Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries, and we've served an awful lot of folks, but that is just one of the ministries under our new launch of Kingdom Builder Ministries, and that's because there are so many ministries that are being birthed right before your eyes, uh, right within your households, that we believe that there's room in the kingdom for everybody, amen? Uh, all those that God predestined to be there, amen? So uh, that's why we want to help nurture those ministries and to help those testimonies come to life that they can all be used, amen, to set the captives free. So if there would be one more on the line that uh, would like to share a brief testimony, I would really uh, be grateful if you would do so, and then we will get our service underway. Amen. Is there another testimony amongst us that's on the actual phone line um, with us this morning? Amen. Uh, this is Sister Michelle Riddle. Amen. I just want to say, God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we were able to make it in this morning. <laughs> Amen. At a little technical difficulty, but... <laughs> We were able to make it in, and I just want to thank God for his glory and his blessing. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. As uh, Sister Kirsten asked earlier, can we confirm and be on one accord with a hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 And hallelujah, hallelujah being the highest form of praise. Amen. Yeah. I want to start off, thank you, Lord, with, I want to speak to you today, but I don't want to speak to you with your mind in the current and present state that it's in. Because you see, the way you think right now may not be in its totality what God desires for you. Amen. You see, the devil is good about bringing up our past. Can I get a witness? The devil is cunning. He's crafty. He wants to set things in motion that will distract you from what God has called you to do. Amen. He will cause you to be troubled in your spirit. He will remind you of your past. He will cause you to be troubled in your mind. He may cause you to keep falling and falling into a sinful nature and a sinful lifestyle. But oh, be reminded this morning, be reminded right now that if God be for you, who can be against you? My God, my God, 
You see, I hope and pray that somebody somehow that find themselves afflicted in their body, in their mind, in their spirit man, in the core of who they are. You might be incarcerated today. You might be heading to be incarcerated tomorrow. You might be in the hospital. You might be in a nursing home. You might be at home in bed not knowing what tomorrow holds. But oh, let us be reminded. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Hallelujah. So today I hope and pray that when we finish today, that somebody out there, whether you're on our call-in line or whether you're watching via YouTube or Facebook or wherever you might be, I want you to tell your problems about your God. But first, you've got to know who your God is. You've got to understand how he works. You've got to understand the mindset that he has as he approaches you right where you are. Hallelujah. When I look back over my life and I think things over as the song says, I can truly say, hallelujah, that I have been blessed. I have not always done the things that I know God has called me to do. I have not acted the way in a way that I know God has called me to act. I have not treated people totally the way that God has expected me to treat people. I have fallen short, but as in Romans 3.23 encourages me, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. I pray that I'm talking to somebody today. I pray that this message reaches somebody today because you might be sitting back on your couch, not feeling confident, not feeling like you have a purpose, not sure that with all your drama, your stress and your nonsense, that God has still called you out of your mother's womb for such a time as this. Somebody listening today might not be doing exactly what what they should be doing. Somebody today might feel like, hey, I can't go to traditional church because they judge me. I can't go to a traditional fellowship because I've had a child out of wedlock and oh, I've got a bunch of holy rollers in my life that do nothing but constantly ridicule me. I may have said a swear word or two in my life. I may have been smoking drugs in my life. I may may have been drinking to a drunken stupor in my life. I may have been not as faithful as I need to be with my spouse in my life. I may not have always put my hands only on my stuff. I may have stolen something that belonged to somebody else in my life. I may have treated somebody less than favorable in my life. I may have lied on somebody in my life. I may have committed adultery in my life. I may have been a child abuser in my life. I may have just been not as faithful. Oops. I just might have talked up somebody just now. See, a lot of times people of faith, when we talk about sin, we have the wrong idea. We think sin is just the problems that are a result of our actions. But sin is anything, and yes, anyone that keeps us from that perfect will of God and to keep him from maximizing himself in our lives. There might be someone listening this morning, listening today. It might be nighttime where you are. You might be in another country. There might be someone this morning, this evening, this afternoon or tomorrow that might have to confess and say, Yea, Lord, I struggle in my faith. I struggle with trusting people. 
I struggle with not understanding. Why is it you give me all of this greatness, but I can't seem to get anything off the ground? Why is it that I love people so hard, but they just don't seem to love me back? And you see people of faith, all of those pent up and built in emotions can keep us from the absolute love and peace of God. Amen. Amen. But God knows what he's doing with you. God knows exactly who you were going to be before you were even who you were. Amen. Wow. I'm praying encouragement over somebody right now. I'm praying that you understand that you are the absolute best that God has to offer. <laughs> we are in a time right now, amen, that uh, Congress and the White House, and uh, because of this COVID-19 situation, some folks are preparing or already have uh, their stimulus checks. So I don't anticipate this Sunday being the most followed or fellowship Sunday because as people get money, oftentimes they will stay to themselves and hide because they're afraid somebody's going to ask for some of it. Amen. So I want us today to pray for those who should be in fellowship this morning, but for whatever fear the enemy has put over them, they have found themselves out of fellowship. And so I want to encourage you, people of faith, to not allow the enemy to confuse you and to trick you and to cause all kind of separation from the love of God. And I'm going to turn my heart now to the Bible. And this should be where we can get edification, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But it's not just getting all of that that matters. It's being launched to be able to do something with it. Amen. You can go to school all your life and you can get multiple, multiple degrees. But what are you going to do with those degrees? What are you going to do with that knowledge? Maybe you don't finish doing what you started off to do. Maybe you went to college to be a computer techie. And now all of a sudden you drive a bus. Sometimes we don't end up where we start off. Amen. But when you're talking about the kingdom of God, that's a good thing. That's beautiful because God wants to take us from glory to glory to glory. Can somebody say hallelujah on that? Hallelujah. I want to encourage you by way of the word of God. And I, I want to be encouraged as well. We're going to start off in the book of John, St. John. In the eighth chapter. Now, let me just tell you, this happens to be one of my favorite subject matters. You see, life has not always been a box of chocolates. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> life has had its ups and downs. Life has had its challenges. Life has had all kinds of obstacles in my way. But I want to encourage you this morning by if I had to give a title to today's message, that title would be simply, But God. Can some person of faith this morning shout out, But God. You see, in the midst, hallelujah, in the midst of your storm, God knew your journey was going to be like it was. God knew that there would be haters on the sideline waiting for you to fall. Amen. It's like playing in a football game and you have a championship game. Right now, there aren't any sports going on. But in the Super Bowl, there are two teams playing. There's one team who strives to beat the next team to prove that they're better and that they are the best and that they have 
earn the right to be reigning champion. Well, the stands are filled with people, but the, the stands on one side, you have people that are cheering you on and your team. But then on the other side of the arena, you have people that are what we would call hating on you. Amen. Can somebody look, look in your heart and say, yeah, I have a few haters going on. I have folk that act like they want me to succeed. But every time I turn around, they're talking about me or they're plotting against me. And in fact, they don't even apply the same rules to me that they apply to number one to themselves. Amen. Or to other people that drives me crazy. If I get pulled over for not using my turn signal, I don't mind a ticket, officer. I don't mind a ticket because I violated man's law. I get that. But don't give me a ticket and then I see you go right down the street, pull over someone else, and they get nothing for the same thing. There are haters in your life. I get it. But God wants to elevate you above your current circumstances. Oh, my God, I'm so encouraged already. So going to the word of God. Those of you who have your pens and your pencils or your crayons, whatever you have. I want you to begin taking notes because I want this word to be on your heart continually. I want this word to swell up inside of you that it begins to encourage you because one of the biggest things that keeps us bound is when we feel alone or we feel helpless or we feel distraught or we feel all hope is gone. So I want you to be encouraged by the word of God. If you are writing this stuff down, I want you to take notes and I want you to start off by putting real big and fat at the top of your paper, but God, and I want to encourage you every single day to look upon that note and just say to yourself, but God, but God, but God, as they say, yes, you're too short, but God, yes, you're too tall for this job, but God, yes, you've had a back a criminal background, but God, yes, you've been divorced, but God, you make too much money, but God, you don't make enough money, but God, hallelujah, hallelujah, the book of John, the eighth chapter, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, now watch this, just, just read his word and allow him to minister unto your soul. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. I asked myself, well, God, will in your word, I believe in your word, but, but why do you pick certain things to share with me? What is your point of reference? People of faith, I want to encourage you because you are his point of reference. Amen. He knows exactly who he's dealing with, when he's dealing with them and why. So. In verse three, it says, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Now, I want to just set the stage. As Jesus goes about his business, as God sets things in motion, he brings, he allows haters to come your way. For one, it's the testing of your faith. But do you ever notice sometimes you may have gotten away with something forever, but as soon as you get in your element and you're gr grinding and you're rolling and you're doing such a great work, it just seems to be that trouble is always in your way at the worst possible time. Amen. I know I'm speaking to somebody this morning or this afternoon or this evening, wherever you might be. And the Bible says, 
the scribes and the Pharisees, people that know better. <laughs> Not the rookies on the field. He's bringing the veterans to you. The ones that are the best of the best of the best. You see, that way they can't be disputed. They can't be denied because these are the people that know what they're talking about. But God. <laughs> Can somebody say, but God? You see, God will take the last and rush them to the front to be the first. He'll take those that believe they're in the front that should be first and he'll cause them to be last. Amen. And the Bible says that they brought unto him a woman taught, taken in adultery. Amen. Mm -hmm. Meaning she doesn't have an alibi. She doesn't have a way out. She doesn't have an excuse. She is toe up from the floor up. And the haters job is to expose you as the wretch that they've caught and found you to be. So the Bible says that the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, you ever have people around you that are just sarcastic? I mean, just they already know the answer, but they just want to play with your intelligence. They want to set you up. To see what you're going to do. You just got released from prison. And your favorite cousin is going to call you over to his house. To celebrate you coming home. But in celebrating. What he's not going to do. Is he's not going to help launch you. Into what God is really calling you to do. What he's going to do is say. Yo play a player from the Himalayas. I got this bottle cognac for you, dude. It's been a long time since we turned up player, player. Let's do this like Brutus. Quack, quack, quack. You see, God knows that people are going to be placed around you, but they're placed there for their own purpose of distraction and destruction. Hallelujah. See, I want to talk to somebody this morning that is bound and confused. Christopher Taylor told us this morning. He set the stage for us this morning. I was confused. I had some stuff going on with me. And somebody listening this morning, you got some stuff going on with you. Can you just admit it? Can you say the scribes and the Pharisees, they caught me red doggone handed? I can't lie. Before I lie to you, I'll fly to you. And God did not give me wings. <laughs> You see, there are haters in your life, in your businesses, in your ministries, in your households, in your neighborhood, on your jobs. But you have got to stop telling God about all of those things because he already knows. Start telling those things about your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, somebody feels all alone this morning. You got great ideas. You got great innovation swelling up in you. And everybody around you is snoring. Fast asleep. And you feel all alone. You feel abandoned. And then you've got the haters coming to you. People that have made millions and millions of dollars and they'll tell you oh you can't do that you don't have enough this you can't do this one of my best friends and I tell this story because it's true sometimes he calls me and I hesitate to answer the phone <laughs> and that's my good friend and my brother in Christ Eric King, who happens to also be one of my attorneys. 
And he will call me up and he'll challenge me in ways. And truth be told, that's how the birth of Kingdom Builder Ministries came about. And this brother will challenge me not as a hater, but as an encourager to tell me, Pastor, don't tell me you're telling people all over the world that they can do this thing and they can accomplish great things. And here you are looking to move into a new building and you're satisfied with being in the basement. Come on, Pastor. Talk to me. Show me what you're working with. See, the Bible will send us out in pairs because iron sharpeneth iron. And I don't mean to offend any of you cousins out there, but I want to tell y'all, some of y'all might be better off cousinless when you're on your journey. Because them cousins mean well, they just don't do well. Them cousins will distract you in a heartbeat. Oops, I hope I didn't step on your toes, cuz. But if I did, to God be the glory. So in the Bible here, I'm going to try to get through this message because there's so much meat in it today. And I believe that it applies to everybody watching and or listening today. Amen. And it has room for everybody. Now watch this. They in verse four, they say unto him, master, look how they acknowledge him. Master. Homie, strong me, act like you know me. Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. We got her. She wrong, dead wrong, flat out wrong. Can't even lie about it. Now watch this here. In verse five, it says, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith thou? Now watch this. I want to I want to educate you a little bit because under the Mosaic law, let's get this thing right. Let's not let's not just get half the story. You see, they found a woman guilty of adultery. Now, I'm not condoning her sin, but like I told you, if I get a ticket, I don't have a problem if I have violated man's law. Because the Bible says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, but render unto God what is God's. So if you find me not on point, then I understand there may be consequences. Amen. Mm -hmm. But don't apply something to me that you are not willing to apply to somebody else. So watch what the Bible says. They say as if they have to remind Jesus. As if he doesn't know the law. As if he's confused in his mind of who he is at this particular journey of his ministry. So they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in the adultery in the very act. So she does not have a leg to stand on. She cannot defend herself. She don't need an attorney because she's guilty. Now Moses in the in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they say, tempting him. <laughs> Anybody feel tempted? <laughs> Anybody feel distracted this day? Anybody confused in your mind? I want you to say, but God. Hallelujah. You see, they're bringing to him half the story. How many times have you been on your job and you may have taken a few minutes longer on your break, but there's 15 other people standing outside smoking a cigarettes five minutes after you come back. Yet the boss is going to reprimand you. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. I may not be sitting next to you because of course I'm not really sitting next to anybody right now because it's under social distance and so everybody's at least eight feet away from me. The standard is six, but 
I need an extra two just in case. <laughs> so they say, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. Uh oh. You ever been around somebody? I get this all the time being the pastor. People that never even opened the book and read it. They talking about something that Uncle Willie told them years ago. Uncle Willie ain't read the Bible himself. He talking about something, something that some uh, uh, baby told him. Boo boo. Do rag told him. But yet now this person's going to come to me as the pastor and try to tell me, you know, the Bible says. What Bible you been reading? Where did that come from? Well, I read my Bible. I know the Bible, Pastor. I don't need to go to church to learn about God. God and me are Gucci. Me and God, we chilling, dog. I think Chris just in the background said bark. Woof, woof. He said work. Hallelujah. Oh, he said work. My eight-year-old daughter just... Confirm for me. I don't think she's a hater though. But just saying. <laughs> so. But Jesus. Stooped down. Now I want to. First. I want to shed light. If the Mosaic law says. That if there is an adulterous act. If a man is found. With a married woman. Or if you perform an act that's against the law, that both people should be stoned to death. Both people should die. Both people should have consequences. Both people should have to answer to the law. But instead of focusing on equality, instead of focusing on the totality, instead of bringing forth the entirety of the lesson at hand, they're only going to focus on what she did. My God, some of you listening or some of you watching right now, It might just be your lack of faith that you struggle with. God may be calling you into a ministry that's going to set the captives free. But because of your past, because of your reputation, because of your lack of education, you are sitting on a stump going nowhere. You're not trying to catch the bus and you didn't even pick up a transfer. But I want to encourage you today that God has called you out of your mother's womb for such a time as this. He knew your journey was not going to be sweet. He knew that you were going to have haters. He knew that your haters were going to hold you to a standard that themselves and others are not held to. See, that's why the believers, God tells us, judge not, lest you be judged by the same measure. You see, many of us are in church today, or maybe not church, you might be like me, sitting at a desk in your Airbnb. But wherever you are, you're where you are because God knew you'd be there. But my job today is to get you to get off that stump and to launch you into what God has for you. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. So you see, they found this woman in the very act. That's what they said in the very act. But they reminded Jesus of the law. And if he's running around telling people or encouraging people that he is the way, the truth and the life and that no man may come until the kingdom or the father, but by him, then he has to honor the law. So instead of 
focusing on their plot and their scheme. I want you to get this because my job today is to encourage you to get off that stump and to get out there and compel the lost to come and to turn towards God. And like Christopher Taylor and Nick and so many of you out there, so many of us, excuse me, I stand corrected. So many of us have a journey that, well, it just leaves us in a place where we feel alone. But I want the word of God to encourage you today. You see, when they brought a person forward who, well, by the law, she should be stoned to death. It's not even a conversation. Don't give her two hundred dollars. Don't let her pass. Go just stone her. She's a buzzard. She deserves it. And since you are all knowing, then you are going to authorize us to do what it is we want to do to her anyway. See, along your path, people are going to want to distract you. People are going to remind you that of your addictions. They're going to want to remind you how you used to lie all the dog on time. They're going to want to remind you how you and that bottle were best friends, married, shacking up together. See, your haters are going to remind you. But God is calling you out of your mucky muck. And look what he does first. He doesn't address their game. See, that's why we've got to stop giving so much attention to the game. We've got to stop telling God about all of the things that hold us back and hold us down. We got to start telling those things that hold us back and hold us down about the God we serve. Oh, my God, I'm talking to somebody today. I don't know who you are, but this message is for you. God is calling you. He's called you. He's drawing you. And so Jesus. It says that he stooped down. And with his finger, he began to write on the ground. As though he heard them not. Now, the Bible also encourages us to give honor to whom honor is due. So in this, he's not belittling them for who they are in terms of their reputation, their gain status, their their awesome leadership amongst their peers. He's not addressing that. What he's doing is setting the stage for you and I. Amen. What he's doing is he's preparing your mind to get off that stump. And he's preparing the educator in you, the the ambassador in you to understand that in your shortcomings, he's not looking at that. God is not looking at Christopher Taylor's face or whatever color jacket he wears or the times that he's found himself uh, drinking until uh, he may go to sleep or the times he's been sitting back just questioning who is God or the times that him and his brother Nick might just be sitting down talking about uh, a certain calendar that they go by and, and all that God has swelled up in them. But no Nobody else hears the story. God wants to call you off of that stoop. God wants to launch you into your destiny. But you've got to say, launch me, Lord. You've got to give him permission. He can do it. But he's taken us through a journey for a reason. And he wants you to know that it's only but for a season. I'm so encouraged when Eric King and I talk. Because I know that I'm going to think about something that I overlooked. I know he's going to challenge me in such a way. <clears throat> Here's the funny part. Eric King had been to church since church been to him. But yet all we talk about. 
Well, that's not true. I do harass him a lot. So we talk about a lot. But oftentimes, I'll say, Eric, close us out. Pray us out of here. And he'll say something like, oh, pastor. Oh, there you go again. I just called you to chop it up. Now I got to pray again. But you see, he sends us out in pairs. That iron sharpeneth iron. And you see, I'm not talking about those cousins that you roll in with. I'm not talking about those friends that don't see the call in your life. I'm not talking about the people that don't believe in your visions. I'm not talking about the people that oversleep every time it's time to go to work. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. It's time to get off the stump. And it's time to allow God in you to swell up in you that you can be sent, launched, and set the captives free. Oh, my God, this morning is good. So he says, the Bible says, so when they continued asking him, now watch this. The Bible says, so when they continued asking, see, he went down on the ground and started doodling. See, I, you know, it doesn't say this, but in my mind, I can see Jesus kneeling down in the sand, doing, making some figure eights, probably sounding like he's at a racetrack somewhere like. Pastor James coming around turn eight. Oh my God, a near crash just about happened there. Oh my word, oh my God, Pastor James coming around turn nine. He's not even focusing. He's not even giving attention to what you are going through. Because his mind is somewhere else with you. So as they see Jesus not giving attention that they believe is deserving, you see, he knows you're sitting on a stoop. He knows your faith is being tested. He knows that you don't feel confident enough to compel them to come. Oh, that's Pastor James's job. Oh, that's the pastor's job. The pastor's supposed to talk to the people's. The pastor spoke. That's his job. Well, the last time I checked, the Bible says that we are all called into the ministry of reconciliation. You better ask somebody, shortcake. He might just be talking about you. Amen. I mean, he might just have called you out of your mother's womb for such a time as this. He knows you, you've you been the, the least in your family. Nobody listened to you. Nobody paid attention to you. Everybody would talk over you. At the dinner table, dad or mom or auntie or grandma would ask a question and everybody would shout out answers. And, oh, when it's your time to speak, they'd say, hey, pass me the vigils. Give me another biscuit. Hey, can I get some more of that juice? And you have to sit back and say, my God, I really have something important to say. I really have something important to add. And they just overlook you as if you have no value. Hallelujah. Bless your people today, Lord. You have value. You are the absolute best that God has to offer. My job is to just encourage you to let go and let God. And my prayer is through the word of God, he will draw you back to him. Oops, did I just say draw you back? Hmm. I think Christopher Taylor kind of set the stage today. I think he set me up. That brother set me up, didn't he? You see, it's not that he hadn't gone to a church. He had. But because of life's journey, he fell away. But God. And when he really allows God to swell up in him. Now, his brother Nick, he don't talk much. Well, unless he's talking about me, but, you know. Oh, he talk about me bad, y'all. I'm going to just testify. Okay? Nick talks about me bad. I don't care what he says. 
but God. Now he's in the background going, mm hmm. He ought to say, tell the truth, Pastor. <laughs> Preach that. <laughs> but is God just calling Chris and Nick? Or is he calling you also? So the Bible here as we continue, and I'm going to try to make it through this lesson because there's just so much here. The Bible says in verse seven says, so when they continued asking him, see, your haters aren't going to stop until they get your full attention. Your cousins are not going to leave you alone until you go and get drunk with them. Don't you see what's happening? Don't you get it? It's not that they hate you. It's not that they're against you. They just don't really know you. Because you're a new creature. God is starting to wake you up and open your eyes, hallelujah, to who you really are. See, you thought you were just a dummy dummy. You thought you only had a third grade education so you couldn't offer anything at, at the seat with the mayor. You thought because you were an adulterer, you thought because you were a fornicator, a liar, a cheat, a thief, a robber, a murderer. Or just a person struggling in his faith. You just thought, God surely can't use me. But you see, in this text, hallelujah, God is showing us. That the haters had to come back and to make sure that Jesus heard them. Hey, <clears throat> you ever feel like this in your life? Your haters are sitting back going, <clears throat> yo, yo, yo. Yo, player, player from the Himalaya. I'm talking at you. I'm talking to you. My God. My God. Those of you that find yourself bound because of things in the law that requires that of you, I want to encourage you. You're not bound in your spirit. In fact, today, I'm trusting God's going to release you. I'm trusting that God is going to launch you into your destiny. But God. So you see, as they bring this woman who's totally guilty, they start telling him about the law. They start reminding him what's really happening here. Jesus kneels down and you notice what he's doing. He's going underneath the accusation. <laughs> you ever hear the term flying under the radar? That's what God wants to do for you today. Let your problems be way up there. Let them be up there. You just kneel down under the radar and let God begin to launch you. He says we wrestle not with flesh and blood. But see, now watch this. It's those wicked things that lurk in higher places. <laughs> Are you hearing me today, people of faith? Just kneel down. Don't give your problems so much of your attention. Stop telling God about your problem and tell your problem about your God. Eric King has challenged me. And I'm so excited. To announce that when we are released. Oh, we're not going in the closet. <laughs> I mean, in the space is real tiny, too. It's real tiny. I take some people by there and they go, well, where is it? Where, where are you going to have church at? Right in there. Hey, where? Right in there. You're looking at it. Where? But I thank God for Eric King. Because I can honestly say. When we are able to meet again. We're going to meet up top. Right where we deserve to be. Not because of us. But there's so many people that need a place of worship. And a place that's not going to judge them. 
a place that's not going to remind them of their shortcomings, a place that's not going to tell them that they are nothing. They need a place where they can come and bring their families and feel safe while God prepares them to be launched. There might be someone listening right now. You might be watching this broadcast. You may not have a place to call home. You may not even be able to get to us. But I want to encourage you right now. We started this ministry under Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. And we would often say, we're not saying God's going to take this little bitty ministry around the world. But wherever God sends you around the world, you keep it real. And for a season, that, that was fine. But God is saying, wait a second, Pastor James, your vision is so shallow. Like Eric would challenge me and say, well, Pastor, you don't ask me how much something costs. You tell me what you want, and then we find a way to get to pay for what you want. If God is showing it to you, shortcake, then why are you worrying about how much it costs? See, that would be Pastor James telling God about his problems. <laughs> Oops, did I just say Pastor James had a problem? Oh, my God. See, I need to tell my problem about my God. I need to tell my problem and say, wait a minute. There are a lot of people out there in the world that are looking for a place to call home. That are willing to be supportive and encourage us as well. Christopher and Nick Taylor aren't the only ones out there. I'm talking to you. God is calling you at such a time as this to get off the stoop and do something. So Jesus, in his message, after they came back again, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Do you get what God is doing? It's kind of like the COVID-19. You see, he levels the playing field. You see, I'm not saying COVID is a great thing. I'm not saying I'm whoo-hoo, COVID-19, whoo-hoo, I'm glad. No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying in the midst of COVID-19, God is doing something so spectacular in the people that he's called. He's bringing families back together again. He's causing people not to just think about themselves, but to think about the well-being of others. He's drawing the respect for one another back to center. Oh, my God. If we're all called into the ministry of reconciliation, what a wonderful way to start. Not to focus on the things that concern you but to be concerned with the greater picture. And that's what Jesus is doing in this text. Amen. Somebody just shout, but God. Hallelujah. But God. You see, he already knew they're bringing you before your judgment seat. He already knew all of your shortcomings. He already knew that you weren't going to have the best of education. And for those of you who have had the best of education, those of you business owners, those of you mega, mega, docious, multimillionaires, what are you doing with it? Only what you do for Christ shall last. Where's your support? To building the kingdom of heaven. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. I know you didn't get your voice at the dinner table. But Jesus is not looking upon that. Jesus wants to raise up that little quiet girl in you. And launch you to the masses. To set the captives free. 
He wants to take that little sinful nature of a little boy. I was telling a young lady today before service, she was sharing with me that she's on her way to go get married. And I told her, I said, listen, when you get there, remind your husband in front of everybody to put away his stupid stick. I don't know what happened, but I think when God made men, he gave us all a stupid stick and it just sits right behind our back. And every now and then we just reach back and scratch it. And then sometimes we pull it out and it causes us to do stuff that's just flat out stupid. Can any man out there say ouch or amen? Or maybe it'd just be Pastor James to keep confessing on himself today. That's OK. But I want to encourage you today. When the Bible says that they came back and they reminded him again. If I can get through this, we're almost finished. Bear with me. He lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now watch what God is having us to see here. God is never going to work against himself. So if the Mosaic law is permanent in the land, then he is not going to refute the Mosaic law. If I go and rob a bank, I'm going to have to go to court to answer according to the laws of the land that I live in. If I am guilty of whatever I'm guilty of, I'm going to have to answer for some of those actions. Amen. But Jesus wants to get you not to be focused on what you have done. He wants to take you somewhere else. He wants to raise your game. He first wants to have you flying under the radar. See, there's peace there. Why is it that all the church folk let their power bill be threatened to be shut off? Oh, I got to run to the agency and give me some help because my power going to be shut off, mama. Whoosh. Oh, my rent is due. I'm going to give me a eviction notice if I don't pay that rent, mama. Whoosh. <laughs> See, when the boat was rocking and all turmoil was hitting high winds and everything was going to pots, Jesus was in that place. <laughs> Hey man, if you hear, if you hear Chris and Nick in the background starting to preach the rest of my message, but God, <laughs> hallelujah, Amen. I hear Sister Michelle Riddle on the phone line saying hallelujah, she yelled out, but God, Amen. whoosh, yeah. Yeah, see, God wants to get you to that place of discomfort to make you feel at comfort. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody need to say, but God. See, he knows the storm is, the winds are there and the storm is beating on your boat. And he knows you're being tossed to and fro in your faith. Whoosh. He wants to take you to the low part of the boat and have you slobber all on yourself. <laughs> Snore so loud they don't know if it's the wind gushing or you sleeping. <laughs> wow. Whoosh. God wants to do something with you today. Yes, he gave you the vision. Yes, he gave you the heart you have.
but he's got to get you to be still and know that I am the Lord. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. If your rent is due, I know it's due. If your power gets shut off, then light it up with the spirit of Christ in you. Wish. Somebody is being called to kneel down this morning, this afternoon, this evening. Whoosh. Fly under the radar, people of faith. Get to where God himself can hear your cry. Whoosh. And be still and know that he is the Lord. Remind yourself of Romans 3, 23. Encourage yourself and say, so what I have sinned and I've come short of the glory of God, so what? I'm in a place now where it's me and God. Wish, wish. And when the people around you like them cousins, them first cousins you got, trying to distract you from what God has called you to do. It's like being in a pond of crabs. When one crab tries to climb out the pit, all the other crabs grab onto his leg and pull him back in. See, Jesus knelt down under the accusations Not discrediting the law, but not putting his focus on your sin. Somebody say, but God. But you but see, God. when you can admit, when you can admit, Father, I have sinned and I've come short of your glory. I'm not saying all of you listening or watching or bank robbers. I don't care if you are or have been. Right now, you can fly under the radar. Everything that man says about you, everything that you didn't believe about yourself. Whoosh. Whoosh. I don't care if you're 90 years old. Whoosh. I have a confession. Not long ago, I wasn't even speaking to my mother-in-law, Emily Stewart. Wasn't going by her house. Didn't want to talk to her. If she came around and spoke to me, I'd be so nasty in my trifling self and wouldn't even speak back. Or sometimes I'd just give a nod. But instead of her focusing on the wretch that I am, she just flew under the radar. Whoosh. She kept praying. Whoosh. She kept telling her problem about her God. Whoosh. Hallelujah. And she just Hallelujah. stayed fast in the ways and things of the Lord. And now today, I go back over her house. Oh, she still frustrates me. People of faith, I got to be honest. Oh, she's still stressing, brother. She still stressing me. I ain't going to lie now. But I'm called to be there. Not just as the shepherd, but as the man in the family. And I do such a disgrace to the kingdom when I set out and I stay above who she is. And I only see the bad that she does. Well, not that she really does bad. It just irks me. I'll just say that, okay? But instead of her being focused on that, she flew under the radar for months and just prayed and just asked God, Lord, show that knucklehead he tripping. You know he tore up from the floor. 
He might not be half bad on a Tuesday. But Lord, it's Thursday now. Help him, Jesus. He want to preach and teach the gospel. But wouldn't it be better if you help him to live it first? Whoosh. Whoosh. See, this thing is not just about you. This thing is about every person of faith that God is calling into leadership as well. We've got to lead by example. We've got to stop running people out of the church by driving our big fancy cars and expecting everybody to put all a stimulus check in our bank account. But we ain't put nothing in them. Oops. Ouch. How many of you right now, under the sound of my voice, you know God has called you to something? Well, heavens, even if you don't know, just look at your crazy life. Oh, you've been through the storm and back. He didn't allow you to go through all of that just for you. Quit being so selfish with your testimony. Get out and tell somebody. I'm encouraging you today to bring your ministry. That's right. I said your ministry because he calls us able ministers. I want to call you out today. What's your ministry? What has God done in your life and allowed to happen in your life where you've got something to tell people, something about something? Be better than me. Don't let it take so long. And stop thinking about the closet. And celebrate going into the sanctuary. You see, as we close this message today, I'm still flying under the radar. Those of you who are listening by way of telephone, you can't see me. But I'm scrunching over and I'm swaying from left to right. Wish. And then like Jesus in the midst of the storm, when things are at its worst, when things look like you should give up, Jesus just raised his voice and said, peace. Be still. What's going on in your life today? Are you struggling in your faith? Somebody telling you or doubting the call in your life? Now, don't get it twisted. There might be. There might be consequences that you have to answer for your actions. But it doesn't mean he didn't call you. Doesn't mean that he's not going to qualify you. Doesn't mean that he's left you or forsaken you. Just mean you did something. You got to pay for it. That's all. <laughs> As we close in this text today. Jesus gave them the parameters and he says, OK. Let you without sin be the first to cast the first stone. Hmm. See, he knows you've got haters. He knows you've got people around you that aren't trying to see you launch. Like them old crabs, they want to pull you right back into the barrel. They don't want to tell you, how can you become a prophet of God? You didn't even go to church till recently. Hmm. Pray for them. For they know not what they do. Don't judge them. Just pray for them. So Jesus again, after he set the parameters, the Bible says he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Oh, my God. In other words, Jesus is saying, look, shoe fly. Don't bother me. Shoe fly. We got other things going on here. Me and her. We got a greater purpose in store. 
And so in verse 9, And they which heard it, being convicted in their own conscience, went out one by one. Oh my God. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Start telling your problems about your God. And one by one, they too shall flee. Stop telling God about all that you need. He knows. And you don't have to remind God of the law. He knows that too. So he says that they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. Them all know-it-alls. Them the ones that should have known better right from the beginning. Just tow up from the floor. Even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. Hmm. Sometimes people of faith, it's just got to be you and the Lord. Your accusers are already defeated. You already have the victory. Start walking in it. Start declaring victory. Start exercising your faith. Christopher Taylor was so nervous when he sat up here and talked to you folks. He, heavens, he was so nervous, he even had to ask me to remind him what I said and how the conversation got started. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But when he got started, his testimony was all his. What has God allowed you to come through this morning or this day or this life? I want to, I want to, begin to encourage you that if God be for you, who can be against you? You see, as Jesus got up, he was alone and the woman standing in the mist, there was nobody left. Now watch this. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, and I want you to get this in your soul this morning. He knows that you have been tore up from the floor. He knows that you've struggled in your faith. He knows you've been called to preach the gospel. And you're sitting on your stump. He knows that you've been called to such a time as this. He's already done the doodling. He's already set the parameters. He's just waiting for you to realize there's nothing left but him and you. So as we title this message today, but God, People of faith, there's nobody there with you but God. And if God be for you, who can be against you? He's more than able. He's more than willing. He desires that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. Be encouraged today. Because as Jesus got himself up. He saw that none but the woman was left. He said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? <laughs> now this is where Jesus can get a little sarcastic. <laughs> As if he didn't know what was about to happen, right? He's playing with you now to say, <clears throat> <clears throat> it's like when somebody cooks your favorite meal and you gobble it up and you sit there as if you don't want any more, but you know you want some more. And then the cook looks at you and goes, <clears throat> help yourself. Go get you some. It's all good in the neighborhood. Jesus is saying to you today, <clears throat> come get your son. Come get
get you some. My God. So she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I. Oh, my God. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. He then says, go and sin no more. Remember, we talked about sin in the beginning of this message today. And a lot of us get it twisted and we say, well, sin, we're talking about the stuff I've done wrong. Yes. But sin is anything that keeps you from the perfect will of God in your life. Are you struggling with faith today? Do you think because you only have a third or second grade education that you can't be the professor? Are you thinking because you haven't voted in the last hundred years that you can't make a difference in your local election or national election? <laughs> but God. See, he'll take the dumb things of this world to confound those things which are wise or thought to be. He'll take the ones that are in the back and he'll rush them to the front. Where are you at today? What's in your heart today, people of faith? I want to challenge you. Just like Eric King has challenged me, I want to challenge you today. Are you thinking about going into the closet when God wants you in the big old sanctuary? I want to encourage you. And so I'm not sure if I'm, I might need um, Chris to help me. I'm not sure. I'm going to try to pull this up. I don't think I have it. I want to show the people, Chris. Can you show? Can you hand me your phone with the photos of the of the building? Because I'm going to ask you to partner with us. I'm going to ask that whoever God encourages their heart. I want to encourage you. Because I'm encouraged. This is our new church home. And I'm thanking God for it. And whether we are in the basement of it or the whole building of it, I'm thanking God. I think I just lost the photo. So as God is encouraging someone on the phone right now. Trying to get the picture. There's a side view of it. I'm trying to make sure that I'm holding it up so people can see. That's the side view in the parking lot. Now you see where my little faith was is right about here. See that? That's where my faith was right there. <laughs> Look in the photo, my finger bigger than the location. Oh my goodness. But God had something else in store. But it took a man who was bold enough to allow God to use him to get me to realize, Pastor, where are thine accusers? Pastor, just go, but go wholeheartedly.
People need what you bring to the table. And I'm seeing more for you than just a closet. So today, people of faith, I'm encouraging you to be encouraged. I'm encouraging you as we close this service out today. If you don't have a place to call home, if you don't have a ministry, Kingdom Builder Ministries is now officially being launched. And you see it's being launched because God has a ministry for so many people. He has a ministry that he's called you to. If nothing else, the ministry of reconciliation. That means there's a work ahead of you. And I want to help groom you, help you along the way, encourage you. Whatever that ministry may be, you can reach me through my personal cell line at area code 513-487-8843. Or you can email me at Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. That's P A S T O R S O N N Y J A M E S. And those of you today that feel compelled in your heart to begin your ministry, I pray it starts right here today. Oh, God is showing me some big visions and big dreams. <laughs> the only thing is he's choosing real little people to get it done with. <laughs> but God. So those of you under the sound of my voice, are you ready to fly under the radar and get away from all that chatter, 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 negative, bah humbug nonsense that the haters are trying to talk about? I believe God is ready to launch some people right now today. I'm going to encourage you, challenge you, even to help me to be all that God has called me to be, to reach the masses, whether they be by telephone or social media, but to compel the lost to come into the kingdom, come into the fold and to turn from their ways. And to seek the face and the will of God for themselves. I pray this message has reached somebody today. I pray that it has encouraged somebody today. I pray that somebody is getting ready to kamikaze karate chop their stump. Take an axe to it. Chop it in half. And get ready to stand for what God has called you to. This is Pastor Sonny James. And yes, we keep it real worldwide in our ministry. But as we launch Kingdom Builder Ministries, I want you to come into the kingdom. I want you to come into the fold. And I'm asking for your partnership today. I'm asking that you um, reach out. And I want to make sure that I get this right. My wife has done such an awesome job getting this stuff together. <laughs> That we've created a, a cash app that's, I believe it's posted already on the site. And I believe that the hashtag or whatever they call it, I'm not really tech savvy. It's, it's a dollar sign, launch me Lord. Launch the kingdom. See, even the pastor needs help. Hey. Launch the kingdom. So I want to challenge you. We're looking for faith partners that are believing God. And believe God with all that you have. I'm asking that God send us and I'm trusting that God is going to send us. Right now. Under the sound of my voice. Faith partners that are believing with us. And it's as simple as A, B, C, or one, two, three. I'm trusting for 25 faith partners to join this ministry and say, Pastor, 
I'm not seeing the closet either. I believe that God has something for me, and I believe that we can touch and agree, and I believe that we can walk as a pair, as a tandem. And I'm going to show my support to this ministry. And I'm believing that God is going to send 25 faith partners that are going to say, Pastor, I'm committing at least $100 to this ministry. See, somebody's calling in and they're trying to get in on the line even at the end of service. To God be the glory. And then I'm trusting that God is going to send in 50 faith partners that say, Pastor, I, I believe God has something for me, and I believe I want to be taught in the ways of the Lord, and I, and I want my ministry. I'm not just interested in building your vision. I, I want the ministry that God has planted in me. I want it to grow. I want to help set the captives free. And I'm trusting that God is going to send those individuals that will sow a seed through their tithes and offering to the building of God's kingdom and commit to $40 a month to be faithful in all their ways. And then I'm trusting God where he's 